Last episode, we focused only on the pitching with our generational first round pick from a year ago in Tom Williamson. Today, we're going to do a little bit of the opposite as we will be focusing only on the bats here. As we've got a series against the Cleveland Guardians. We have overachieved to start this year, starting at 9 and 7, but Cleveland is the cream of the crop of this division. In first place at 11 and 4, we've got a three game series against them. We're going to watch the bats in all three of these games to see if we can keep this hot start start going against Shane Bieber got a little bit of throwback jerseys in this game Carl McIntyre as he so often does it feels like every game he starts off with a leadoff single it is sometimes maybe more and obviously sometimes he gets out too but I feel like the single is like by far the most common outcome here uh in his leadoff status to start all these games. Rincon chops it right up at the middle of the field and can't quite get the double play, but we've had a two fielders' choices since that leadoff single by Carl McIntyre. We've got Mosqueda now. Wild pitch is going to send Rincon running. I don't know if that's a good idea, and he is out. I feel like it'd have to be a much, much wilder pitch for it to be a good idea for Rincon to go. He does not have the speed. Russell Mosqueda is going to get another chance here, top of the second, but he's going to fly out to uh, that right center field. Kevin Sandoval, before this hit, he was starting this year at about like batting like 137 or something, so he desperately needed this hit. And then Chet Rodriguez is batting even worse. He's batting like 100 on the year, but he gets a ton of this ball. And our two worst hitters in the lineup so far this year. Both are going to get a hit and bring the first run across. That's exactly what I'm hoping to see. Some of these guys on cold streaks, hopefully they can break them in this episode. And that's looking to be likely here as they both got a hit in their first AB. Darren Roman, he's actually been quite good this year, but he's going to go down swinging there. Trying to get that extra... Runner in scoring position across Blake Boyer is one of the best on our team at doing it. But he's going to draw a walk and bring up Victor Benitez, who also draws a walk. The bases are now juiced, and the order is flipping for Carl McIntyre. What can he do with the bases loaded? He's hitting 260 so far this year. Two home runs. But this time, on the 0-2 pitch, he goes down swinging. So no runs with the bases loaded is a tough sight to see. Now here, top of the third, Jason Gill goes down looking. Bringing up Alberto Rincon, who does exactly the same. Trying to avoid getting struck out on this side and... I mean, at least must get a swung, I guess. But if he hadn't swung, it wouldn't have been a strike. So I don't know if that's actually good. Striking out the side in the third as we are now down in this game. Looking for a comeback. And Kevin Sandoval is breaking out of his cold streak here. A multi-hit game. Two for two so far on the day. Jet Rodriguez back up. This is not quite as good as his first hit. And it's actually going to be a double play. And ruining the momentum we had in this inning. And then Roman just looks. I mean, you got to protect better than that. That wasn't even close to the edge for Roman there. We have more hits than the Guardians, but we're down by two. Boyer goes down swing. And we're starting to rack up these strikeouts here, Bieber. Mowing us down a little bit here in these middle innings. Benitez. Breaks his bat on his way to first, and he is thrown out. Offense has slowed down significantly here as we've gone along in this game, but McIntyre going to get his third hit of the ball game, but not going to do anything with it as we go down looking again. We are getting struck out at an alarming pace these last three innings. Mosqueda. Top of the sixth. 0 for 2 today. 
Hits this one pretty well, and it's gonna touch down. And we've got Rincon already on the base pass. Accidentally edited his single out of here. Or I think it was actually a walk, but Mosqueda gets our second run across the board, but we are now down two to seven. We've allowed a four run inning and a three run inning in this game. Have you know, three scoreless innings between them, but when you're allowing that many runs every time you're allowing them, it's going to be really tough to come back, especially with the way our offense has been playing today. Roman swung at that ball well outside the zone, and it's going to be an infield fly and out. Don't want to waste these extra base runners again. Boyer is going to do just that, unfortunately, though, with the fly out to center. We have left a lot of men on bases in this game. Now, in the seventh, Benitez grounds it over to the shortstop. Easy out for him. Top of our order is back up. Can they do something to make this game interesting? McIntyre, that is deep into right center field, and it is up against the wall. I was wrong last time. This was his third hit. Now 3-4 on the ballgame with that triple, his first of this season. You combine good contact with good speed. This is the kind of stuff you see. And McIntyre so far having the best game of anybody here in the first game of this series. Got to bring him across, though. Gill, that should do it. That's going to touch down for Jason Gill. Bringing across run number Three for the squad, and he will stay at first. RBI single for him. Rincon swinging at the fastball. Can't find any contact here as Parker Messick has come in the seventh to relieve uh, Shane Bieber, but we only get the one run. Things looking like a Cleveland Guardian win here as we now just have two innings left and we don't start it. Particularly well with Kevin Sandoval. 2-2 pitch for Chet Rodriguez. Swiping at that changeup. Doesn't even matter who's pitching today. We're just striking out left and right. Roman. That's it well. But he got a little bit too much underneath it. So he's going to be called out. Now just the ninth inning. Maybe we can bring across a run. I don't have much faith that we're going to score more than we did in the entire first eight innings here in the ninth, especially with the bottom of our order up and they go down one after the other. And Carl McIntyre can't extend this ball game, so Guardians will take the 7-3 victory to open up this series. Now, game number two, Daniel Espino, the pitcher this time around, and what, I, what did I tell you, man? Carl McIntyre and hitting a single to start these games. It's almost automatic, it feels like, in our spotlight games. Gill swipes at that high fastball for the first out of this game. Hoping to just not strike out as much as we did last game. I feel like it's a reasonable goal as McIntyre steals second. Getting himself in scoring position. He is quite good at that, and that's part of the reason he's our leadoff hitter. Rincon is going deep with this one, but it's going to stay in the ballpark. And Mekatar will stay at second, bringing up Mosqueda. He has a chance to bring across the first run of the ball game instead of generous call. He's going to get him looking. Very rarely in this game have I seen a, that pitch called for a strike, but it happens this time around. Sandoval goes down swing and hits first A-B here. He's up to 167 after last game. Chet Rodriguez lifts this one, and it's caught in foul territory. Second inning not looking too great for us. But Darren Roman gets that to bounce off the grass right in front of the center fielder there. So he'll get himself on base. Boyer, low in the zone. He's swinging at it anyway. And throw almost high, but 
it will be made for the out. Massive inning by the Cleveland Guardians. All of a sudden, we're down five. Dude, when we allow runs, we're not allowing like one or two in an inning. It's been three, four, and five have been the scoring innings for the Guardians so far in this episode. When we have a bad inning, we have a bad inning. McIntyre, it's another hit. He has been racking up the hits in this series. And again, he finds himself safely stealing second. Feels almost automatic when he's going for second that he's going to get it. Jason Gill will end up walking, which means we've got two men on, one out for Rincon. This one, he got underneath it again. Getting some balls into the outfield here, but just none of them with the power. And of course, we are not a particularly powerful hitting baseball team, but man, seeing us float these lazy flies into the outfield every time is very unfortunate. Sandoval goes down swinging for the second time in this game. And Cleveland now is up 9-0. Like I said, when we have a bad inning, we have a bad inning. Why can't we allow like... One run, or two runs. It's been three, four, twice, and five. All of the scoring <laughs> so far in this series. It's been pretty wild. And what also is wild is how quickly Espino is just mowing through this lineup right now. Nine runs on nine hits for the Guardians. Warriors going to kick off the fifth with a ground out. Bringing up Benitez on the 2-2, swings through the changeup. Spino is in the groove, and there is not much we have been able to do about it here. He is going to get through the fifth very, very quickly. Ground out and two strikeouts. And now it's looking like we just got to try to avoid getting shut out here as we're now in the sixth, still nothing on the board. Jason Gill starts us off in the sixth well, though. But Rincon swinging at that ball is not going to be very helpful. Mosqueda decently hits, but it's got just a little bit too much underneath it once again. Something we have seen very, very often here in this second game. Sandoval, he has struck out swinging all three at-bats so far in this game. Still just no runs on three hits through six. Espino would come out for the seventh just by having a little bit of a high pitch count here. Gets the fly out here to start the inning. Roman. And stop me if you've heard this before. There's a fly out here in this second game of the series. Seems like that's half of the results of these ABs is flying out. Then Boyer grounds out much like he did his last time up at the plate. That would be the end of the game for Espino. He'd, he'd make it seven shutout innings on us. And, I mean, my wish did come true. Cleveland scored only one run in an inning. It's, we're down 10-0. But um, at this point, coming back and winning this ball game is not part of the goal. The goal is to not get shut out. But things are looking increasingly dire here as yet another... Fly out will end the eighth. We've only got three outs to play with to avoid getting shut out here. Rincon starts us off with a fly out. Been that kind of day for our offense. Last game, I, I mean, I guess I said I didn't want to strike out as much. I, we didn't strike out as much in this game. We just hit lazy flies. All game long, and Sandoval goes around that pitch. We get shut out 10 nothing, Showing that even though we had this hot start, we're now, we're now down to 500, and the Guardians are still well above this team, it seems like, in terms of really both pitching and hitting. But now here in Game 3, we are looking to avoid the sweep and hoping to get back above that 500 record. Cleveland, I mean, they're hitting 300 in the series. They've only allowed three runs in the first two games. They are dominating us. Got to come up with a better performance in this episode. 
Don't want to get swept by a division rival ever. Especially not when I'm watching all of these games. Pitcher for today will be Mike Soroka. Not a great strikeout pitcher, but he is pretty good at limiting contact here. Which he's going to be the only one to do or uh, do that in this series against Carl McIntyre to lead off. First time he's been out. Jason Gill, though, he's going to get himself on base via walk right after him. Rincon hitting over 300 this year. Goes down, swing. Mosqueda. He's going to watch that one go by as Jason Gill swipes second. Mosqueda not going to be able to do much with it, though, as he will be rounded out. It will be a scoreless first inning to start up this ball game for us. Sandoval here to lead off the second. Going to just be able to avoid going around there, and he will get on base on that 3-2 pitch. Rodriguez after him. He is going to ground into a double play for the second time in this episode. 4-6-3, and he's out. Gill, that is over the head of the first baseman. He is on base. Yes, just, man, and what if he had not grounded out in a double play just before him? We could have had a run across the board right now, possibly. Boyer can't get it through the infield. Rosario makes the play. And another scoreless inning. Offense has been tough to come by for us in this episode. Soroka takes the tapper by Benitez and gets him out easily. Here top of the third. McIntyre, that one was left right over the middle and he gets himself another hit. I think, obviously, we still have the rest of this game to play, but I think it's pretty easily to see that the MVP of this episode is Carl McIntyre. He has been getting hits every single game, multi-hits in the first two, and then, of course, has at least one today with some more ABs coming up to try to get a third consecutive Multi-hit game, and Alberto Rincon able to have that one not caught out in left field, and some stadiums might have even left the park. But he'll settle here for the double to lead off the fourth. This is our opportunity to get on the board, and we have to make the most of it here. Can't waste the leadoff double. If there's anyone that I trust to make something happen with it, it's Mosqueda, but... He's instead grounding out to first. What about Sandoval? He's got a full count pitch. That one is cranked into right. It is deep, back, and off against the wall. Just avoids leaving the park. And would have been a nice two-run homer, but... Oh, we did not advance to home. I would have felt that Rincon would have had the time to do so, but he must have been scared that that was going to get caught out there, and so he stayed on his base for a little too long but we've got bases juiced Darren Roman hitting nearly 350 with over a thousand OPS five home runs what can he do he's gonna go around that pitch well outside the zone a missed opportunity from who's probably been our best hitter so far this year a Boyer he is somebody that constantly comes through in the clutch for this team and he's doing so here that one up on the warning track, it is going to be three runs on the double for Blake Boyer. And we have jumped out to a lead here, top of the fourth, with two outs, taking advantage of the loaded bases and getting all of his teammates across home plate. Beautifully done by Blake Boyer. But he does trying to extend the inning. Instead, softly taps it to Rosario. A three run scored here in the fourth. Finally, it had been 12 plus innings of scoreless baseball. I think it was something like 15 straight scoreless innings, something like that, dating back to the first game. We get some runs across the board. This time it's 
Carl McIntyre once again still in a base. He has four stolen bases. I feel like he's gotten most, if not all, of those in this episode. Um, has been stealing bags all over the place. I don't know why he's not doing it in simulation. But Jason Gill can advance the runner as he lines it out to Med Rosario. McIntyre going for third here. That's a close play, but he is safe. Now, five, I, I feel like he has four steals at least of his five in this episode, if not all five. Just missed. And Russell Mosqueda is going to end off the fifth for us. Now in the sixth, Kevin Sandoval going to get himself a walk. Chet Rodriguez going down, looking at the fastball high and inside. Really good pitch there from Zach Gallen. We're at the point in this franchise where the Cleveland Guardians are, are using Zach Gallen as a relief pitcher. That's a beautiful play made in left field, by the way. Which must just be because of some regression, because I think Zach Gallen is one of the better pitchers in the base game, if I'm not mistaken. We are all the way in 2029, though. We've got runners on the corners here. Top of the six for Victor Benitez. But this one into short outfield. And it is caught by Rosario. So no additional runs. We are up one run here. Top of the seventh. McIntyre struck out. Gill can't quite get it to go through the infield. He does beat the throw, though. So he's on base. Bringing up Rincon. Gill successfully still second. Done a nice job here in this series. Still in a lot of bags. 2 0 for Rincon. Right to Rosario. He is out easily. But a nice job by Gill to avoid the double play, which gives Mosqueda an RBI opportunity. Not had his best day today, but he's not going to have the chance to get that RBI opportunity as these. Coward Guardians are going to intentionally walk him on an over 3 day. Sandoval. This one. Too much underneath it. And it is a fly out, so we can't extend our lead. Rodriguez. That is fair. Just barely out in left field. He is going to contently get his way in to first. And then right in the same spot, just a little bit deeper. Darren Roman right behind him. That is going to score a fifth run. We've now got ourselves a little bit of some cushion here for a save opportunity. Two hits just sharply into left, just fair. And Roman picks up the RBI, the guy that's been, honestly, in the first month of this season, the best hitter we've had. Boyer grounds out. Roman gets to third. And Benitez hits this through the infield, and this is going to score run number six. And so we've got ourselves a good lead here. The team has definitely showed up in the last half of this ball game offensively, which is kind of the opposite of what usually happens. We usually do all our scoring in the first half of the ball game. Gill. Hit that one pretty well, but he couldn't quite find the gap on it. And so we'll have one more inning to try to extend our lead and maybe avoid a save opportunity altogether. Rincon nearly left the park with that one, but near the warning track, Garcia tracked it down. Mosqueda, not his best effort there, and this has not been his best day. Now 0 for 4, was intentionally walked once. And then Sandoval, no luck extending our lead here. So it will be a save opportunity for Bartolo Ordonez, who is 7 for 9 in save opportunities this year. ERA is not great. And so we'll see if he can finish the job here for this game and we can avoid the sweep. Starts with a flyout. 
then a ground out, then a ground out, so easily done. We've now reached the end of April, gotten ourselves a little bit into May here, and we stand at 16 and 17, which is third place in the division. Taking a quick look, an update on how our players are doing. Mosqueda batting 277, so his average has declined a bit. And he does have five home runs, though. Rincon up to eight home runs. He got hot hitting those long balls in April. And then Sandoval on a hot streak, getting back to what he does for the team. Didn't think he would be down too long with how he's performed in this series. McIntyre also on a hot streak, as is Tom Williamson, who is one and three, but I don't think wins are very much of a pitcher stat. He has more strikeouts than he has inning pitched. He has sub two ERA and a one one three whip. I think he's doing quite well. Still too early in the season to have too much in the way of attribute increases. We see actually quite a bit from uh, Mosqueda, but yeah, a guy like Rincon barely has anything changed. So we won't see much in the way of attribute changes until probably the end of May. But um, the last thing I wanted to do is let's just uh, take a look at where our team's uh, ranks in several categories here. Average wise, we are 13th in the league. Blake Boyer leads us there, the only one hitting over 300 uh, on the team. Uh, runs wise, we are sixth, which is a pretty good number to be at, I think. Hits wise, we have the 18th spot. In terms of hitting doubles, we are not great, but we're tied for 15th, so pretty average. Triples wise, uh, not great there. Home runs. Got to be towards the bottom of this. You'd think we're not a great power team. 25th there with Alberto Rincon and Darren Roman tied for first place at eight apiece. Uh, RBIs, sixth. Steals, we are tied for fourth with McIntyre leading us there. Spot stealing, um, tied for 10 with a lot of people. There's a bunch of people that have been caught stealing. 10 times for a top 10 stolen base percentage. So the offense been doing pretty well, either average or above average, pretty much everything we've seen. A couple things were below average here, like strikeouts, but uh, not great power wise is kind of the one thing, but we knew that already. Power is not our strong suit. 13th here in on base percentage. Um. In terms of some pitching stats now is, which I, is what I want to see. Let's see where we rank in our pitching. 23rd in ERA. Not great buster. Pringle has the best ERA. Uh, complete games, I don't imagine. Not really a strong suit of ours. Until we get Tom Williamson, who has excellent stamina. That number might start going out. We have three shutouts this season. Saves-wise... A little bit below average there. Blown saves. How many saves have we blown? Uh, tied for a lot of teams with five blown saves, which is just one less than the person that leads the league, which kind of goes to the point where we need a, an improvement at closer, I do think. It's allowed. We have allowed. So in the terms of the pitching, we're seeing ourselves be below average pretty much everything, which is... Kind of the opposite what we were seeing um, offensively and then uh, combine it all together and we're average. We're 16 and 17 here on the season. Oh, we have allowed the most home runs in the league. Not great. And so we're no longer the worst team in the league in pitching, I suppose. We're 29th, but we are still dead last in power. That's going to be a, a focus here of this draft class and there are a couple players that I like um, first guy here is Garrett Guerra who projects to be a really good hitter not a big time fielder but if we're looking for somebody that could play left field for us I know it's not in his positions but I feel like we could have him play left field um, that's kind of been a bit of a problem spot for us I think he could do it. He's going to have pretty decent power, vision, discipline, contact. He's going to have all the offensive stats you want. And then 
He's not going to be great defensively. I don't think he's going to be, like, terrible either, though. Uh, he'll be good enough, I think, to play left field for us. And if he's not, uh, he could always DH. He's ranked 28th in MLB, so there's a decent shot. He's there with our fifth pick. And then the other guy with some maybe power is Fabio Portillo. He doesn't look to have a lot, though. He's going to have more, like, 50s power. Um, so... The reality, I know like there's been discussion in the comment section, it's very hard to get power in this game and that's going to be true for this draft as well. I don't think it's going to be great for power. But if we're looking for a right fielder, he's definitely going to have a big arm and he's going to have at least some power potential, even though it won't be kind of readily apparent as much as it would with a guy like Garrett Guerra. But that's kind of all I have for guys I've scouted that um, I've liked so far after scouting. But of course, we still got plenty of time in this scouting period. And so I'll give you some more updates as we go along. And then, of course, um, a couple episodes of now, from now, we should have our final draft preview. And then, of course, the draft. And so we'll keep this season chugging along in future episodes. But that's all I've got for this one. I'll be back soon with another. And I will see you then.